Hi, I'm Dan Stanton, the editor and founder of Bioprocess Insider. I'm at BPI Europe in Austria, and I'm speaking with Joey Stutz from Boehringer Ingelheim. Joey, welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, Joey was speaking as part of the downstream uh, production track yesterday. Joey, can you um, talk us through um, briefly your presentation? Yeah, so what we were talking, what I was talking about is really how we're trying to better utilize our data to make better process decisions. And so we've taken a multi-tiered approach to that. And one of the most exciting topics uh, around this digitalization approach, if I may, is the, the modeling. You know, and so we've collaborated with some several companies to try to optimize how we're using our data to build models, both statistical and mechanistic models, so we can, one, understand our data better, and, and two, predict what might happen outside of our, our data sets that we have. Right? Is this all to, um, uh, to encourage the speed to market, to increase the, um, the speed of development? I think um, once we get a handle on how to use these mechanisms or these models, it will greatly enhance the speed to development. But right now we focus more on really process understanding and being more or better prepared to bring a safe drug consistently to the market. So improve our understanding of process ability and process robustness. And once we get a good handle on that, I think then we can greatly increase speed to market and enhance our efforts. So, so really what you're doing at Boehring uh, Ingelheim at the moment, it's, it's kind of early days. Um, where do you hope this, 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 this project, this program is going to go in the next few years? Well, it is early days and we're hoping w right now, and I, I'm hoping with one of the next, either the next drug or the, the drug after that we bring to the market in the late stage, we'll be able to have a much more robust understanding of, of and broad understanding of our, our process robustness to present to our management and to our the regulatory authorities, but after we've proven that we have established these models as 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 digital twins of our data, then we can start to greatly reduce the efforts we put into understanding robustness and understanding pro, um, processes um, at the development stage. So reduce development uh, in getting the product into the clinic and reduce development then getting the product to the market can, uh, using these models. Yeah. Um, the, the plenary session this morning, uh, um, the representative from UCB was talking about predictive modeling. So I, I'm taking it, it's, it's not just Boehring or Ingelheim who are looking to these sort of developments, to, well, these programs to um, enhance developments. Is that the case? Absolutely. It's, it's not just Beringer. Um, we, we pride ourselves on being close to the front, but I think a lot of people are using these, these models, and especially mechanistic models. I mean, really, these, these, the mathematics behind the models have been around since the 50s and 60s. There's nothing dramatically new, but as the computer power goes, goes, uh, advances, we can now use the models in real time and really in, impact these. And we're collaborating with certain companies like GoSilico and uh, <clears throat> who have this Chrome X that have now software platforms. So you don't need to have a data scientist to run these platforms now or a computer scientist. They have the softwares that, that more the, the new wave of, of lab technicians can really run them and apply them. Yeah, so that's really helping quite a bit. Um, a few years ago at these sort of events, um, one of the big buzzwords was big data. It was being yeah. thrown around all over the place. Is this an example of, of how we've evolved from using that buzzword to actually um, uh, bring it into the biomanufacturing um, area of the industry? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a small step in the right direction, I would say. Really, the big data is, is very nice because, again, where we, in my opinion, in the industry are, are suffer is that we, can, we can't really apply these big data ideas like the academics guys are starting to develop because we don't have our data properly structured. We have lots of data, but it's in Excel files, it's in dispersed uh, databases that aren't aligned. And now I think the industry needs to really focus on getting this data in a proper structure, which is part of my talk as well. And, and once it's structured, then we can really optimize these knowledge or these, these technologies being developed in the academics and in the, in the uh, fields to, to do big data, to really understand what this data is telling us in a, in a thorough way. Yeah. And uh, how far off do you think we are as an industry from doing that? Well, I, I think uh, as an industry standard, we're not too far. We, I think just a couple of years away, I mean, Behringer ourselves, we've been running fully automated uh, and fully digitalized manufacturing processes for over, over 15 years. And so the data is there, it's in the databases, it's just nomenclatures and stuff like this need to be aligned. Um, but we're, we're almost there. I think that other industries are not, other, sorry, other players in this industry are also not too far behind.
Oh, exciting times. Yes. Joey, look, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you and enjoy the rest of the show. Thanks a lot. I appreciate Thank your you. time. Yeah.